Hey everyone, this is Grant's Guess here, and today we're going to be doing a tier list video. So it's a bit of a different video here today. So um, today I've been thinking, why not do a tier list of World War Two countries? Now I love history. Um, a lot of people who watch this video might enjoy history. I don't know. All we know is that history can be satisfying. And what is the one of the most biggest global conflicts in human history? Well, the Second World War. I mean, it's the most destructive um, event in human history, anyway. So the way we're going to be ranking this list is how these countries contributed to the Second World War. So, how much they conquered, how much they made such a difference. But if these countries have committed like war crimes and all these like lame stuff that that contributed into them, maybe perhaps losing some battles, then they'll be getting downgraded. Now for the Axis side, we have uh, Nazi Germany, obviously, Fascist Italy, Imperial Japan, Finland, and Romania. Now, for the Allies, we have the USA, Soviet Union, Britain, France, China, Canada, Australia, and India. Now, first off, we're going to start with Nazi Germany. Now, Nazi Germany, a country that's in the middle of Europe, conquered a lot. They really did an awesome job of conquering almost all of Europe. I mean, literally, Hitler, what you don't realise, is he's actually pretty much genius of what he did. As much as it's wrong to say that. Um, now, obviously, there were downsides to Nazi Germany. Um, the Holocaust. I mean, whether you think of the Nazis, you think of the Holocaust, really. Which was obviously fucked up. Nazi Germany introduced the Blitzkrieg tactic, which is where they encircled um, um, Allied troops and literally just sent all their men to literally straight up front them up, really. Um, Nazi Germany, they almost conquered Russia. I mean, unfortunately, that didn't go too well for them because winter and Stalin, pretty much. The only thing that wasn't good about Nazi Germany was their naval superiority, really. I mean, they didn't really have that much, you know, to deal with against, uh, you know, Britain's Royal Na Navy. So where do I put them? I'm going to put... I'm going to put them at eight here. Now, next we have Fascist Italy. I mean, they conquered Albania... British Somaliland, even though they literally had to go full out with their troops. I mean, it's not much to say about Italy. They were just, they were just really bad, and just very useless. You know what? When you're describing Nazi Germany and fascist Italy, Nazi Germany was that older brother that had to take care of everything. You know, cause like the little brother just couldn't handle it. You get what I mean? See, the thing is, if you look at um. The British Somaliland battle. All they did was literally send all their forces to literally outnumber the British troops. That that was it. Because if we had out the same close numbers, Britain would have won it. They were literally just doing what Russia did pretty much to Nazi Germany. Or just send everyone. Just send everybody. And because it was so bad, you're getting in the trash tier. Now Imperial Japan. Now, Japan, they were pretty similar to Nazi Germany. I mean, they conquered a lot. They conquered a lot of China. Um, they annexed Korea. Um, they took over a lot of South and Asia. And they were literally threatening Australia, which is... And India, I think. So yeah, that was pretty mental. So yeah, that gives them a good amount of points. Um, but there were downsides. Um, if you've heard about the Nanking Massacre, see the thing is, people look at Japan now, you know, look at their animes. Oh, they're just really nice, really colourful, vibrant colours. Um, if you look at Japan back in World War Two, they were bayoneting civilians, committing a lot of war crimes, and I should say a lot of Chinese women were raped, which was fucked up stuff, really. I'm not gonna lie, they held off the US for a long period of time. I mean, it literally took two nicks to take down the Japanese, really. So that gives them up a, a couple of points. So, Japan... It's either A or B. 
Uh, I mean, they had kamikazes, which was really pointless. They lost in battle midway, which is their down point. So I'm going to put them in B tier. Now, we have the Finns. Finland, to be honest, a lovely country. I have... I, I don't know. I have respect for the Finns. Especially for the Winter War. If you guys have um, learned about the Winter War, they kicked Stalin's ass in the Winter War. You know with the PPSH? The Finns um, created the original of it, which was called the Savoy. And it was a much better version of the PPSH. The Soviets looked at that uh, Samoy and were like, Yo, that is amazing. We want that. Stalin, let's just take it. And then they made it their own PPSH-41. And the Finns, they held off the Soviets for a very long time. I mean, the Soviets like, thought they could just walk into Finland and just be like, yeah, this, this is going to be piss easy. It's going to be easy, easy. And then the Finns were like, you know what? Let's just send this guy through. If you don't know who he is, he's Simo Haya. Amazing sniper, by the way. Absolute beast. Also known as the White Death, and it was called that for a reason. Now, if the Finns were on the Allies, they would have contributed a lot, a lot more, I reckon. Right, to the European stage, the African campaign, and even the Pacific. So, I'm going to give them an SS rank. I mean, to be honest, I don't know if they were really an Axis side, they were just kind of mostly neutral throughout the war, really. But anyways, next country. Now, Romania. Now, Romania weren't really... Uh, well, they were mostly unknown throughout the Second World War. Not gonna lie, they had a lot of oil, and that's why Nazi Germany um, wanted them on the Axis side. I mean, I don't really blame them for joining the Axis, because I... I mean, they couldn't really do much. I mean, they contributed to the Eastern Front. That was it, really. Uh, I don't really know where I put them. I'll put them at C tier. Now we're on to the Allies. We have the USA. I mean, I think they just got to belong in SS tier, really. I mean, they won the war in the Pacific. Contributed a lot to the again in the Pacific campaign. They were amazing in the African and the European uh, campaigns. What can I say? The US deserve it. So next we have the Soviet Union. I mean, they defeated the Nazis. They got into Berlin. And they raised that Russian flag over Berlin. Over the Reichstag. Stalin killed a lot of his own people. The thing with the Soviet Union is that Stalin and Hitler were pretty much as bad as each other, really. I mean, Stalin was a dictator, a ferocious dictator. Ugh. I mean, I'm glad he did very well in taking back their own land. So, I guess I'll put them at A tier, along with the Nazis, because they committed a lot of war crimes themselves. So yeah, Soviet Union, you gain A tier. I mean, obviously we can't put them below the Nazis because they literally did defeat the Nazis. All right, we have Great Britain. Um, y y yeah, yeah, SS tier, no, without doubt. Now, when people look at the early in the war, people usually say that we were the only ones fighting the Nazis because France got completely fucked. When people say that Britain was the only ones fighting Nazis, I guess you're partially right about that. However, we did have our colonies. I mean, we had Canada. Australia, India, New Zealand. I mean, they, they contributed a lot, really, to the African campaign especially. I guess we were fighting the Nazis on our own in Europe, you know, with the Battle of Britain. I mean, yeah, we just kicked the Nazis' ass in that battle. But you can't give um, uh, recognition for the colonies. But yeah, Britain gets SST, no question. Uh, next up, we have France. I think it was June 1940, um, when France was literally occupied by Nazi Germany. Now, I don't blame France for surrendering against the Nazis, because I think that's what people tend to make fun of them for. And it's quite sad, really, because the French Empire used to be one of the biggest empires of all time, really. 
But when we look at France in World War Two, we just think, oh, they're just sur surrendering monkeys or whatever. The only thing I have a goat for them for, for World War Two, was leaving a gap open for the Nazis, you know, to, to do their blitzkrieg against uh, the British and the French. And they kind of fucked themselves over, really. They did have, like, a team of, like, like French soldiers, like, after they got occupied, who were fighting alongside the British because they didn't want to fight against, alongside the Nazis. And they did a decent job. So where does France go in World War II? I'm going to put a bit D tier. Next up, we are China. Now, China, they really didn't do a good job against the Japanese. I mean, they were getting conquered a lot. With China, they weren't really um, modernising with their military. So I think it was because of that, like, they were really suffering a lot, like, around that East China. However, um, they did, um, they were a help for us in the Pacific campaign. So you gotta give them that. But, they weren't really that good, I'd say. I'll put them at D tier. Now next up we have Canada. Canada. Now this might be a shot to everybody. But I'm going to put them at SS tier. And I want to explain why. Um, the Canadians need a lot of credit really I think. I mean they helped us through at like, the Europe stage. A big help for us in the African campaign. I think they were in the Italian campaign as well. I can't remember if they were in the Pacific. I'm pretty sure they were. I'm pretty sure they were fighting alongside us in the Pacific. And they did a kick ass job of it. I mean they were in D-Day. Helped us uh, take back France and moved us on to Germany. So I'm going to give Canada SST. You guys deserve it. Well done. Now, Australia. Australia, another another amazing nation uh, for World War II. I mean, they were a huge help for us in the Pacific. I mean, not going to lie, they were getting threatened by the Japanese um, when they were taking over Southeast Asia. And they did a good job holding their ground. The Japanese were looking like they probably would have been invading onto their soil, really. And the Australians were like, no, fuck you. Get the fuck off our land. For that, I'm going to put them at SST as well. You guys deserve it, well done. Now, our final country, we have India. Now, they had one of the biggest armies in the Second World War. I think they had like 2 million troops, I think. They held off um, the Japanese well. I mean, the Japanese were getting close to, the, to their borders. I mean, they used to could have like, just like, fallen to the Japanese, really. But they held their ground as well, really. I'll put them at S tier. So yeah, for SS tier, I have the Finns, because of that amazing sniper. The USA, because of them two nuclear bombs. The UK, because we're just so badass. Canada, Australia. Now for S tier, we have India. A tier, we have Nazi Germany and Soviet Union. B tier, we have the Imperial Japan. C, we have Romania. D tier, we have France and China. And in the trash, we have Failure Italy. So yeah, that's my um, tier list for the countries of World War II. Let me know what your uh, tier list would have looked like. I'll put this um, tier list in the description below. Please like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want more um, content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.